so let's go for the new topics yesterday we did hamlet and hamlet anything else apart from that some comedies we have done we are going to deal with the other tragedies the next tragedy that comes in the group is othello who knows about othello anybody who has already read it one okay many of you tell me the story of othello just brief summary two three lines story of a black black man okay mm -hmm. keep going acha wo to ho to normally hota hi hai he kills his wife finally so uh thank you so much for this summary we are going to deal with the next tragedy we have talked about hamlet now we're going to deal with othello another tragedy in the line kya hua ac band karna hai ha on kar do jitne bhi ac on kar do i am in support of ac mujhe khud garmi bardash nahi hoti time time gets changed right as a student there was no cooler we could not afford cooler yahi jiya sare mere ke padhai ki hai maine third floor pe room and um, one of my roommate from uttarakhand so the room charge was 3600 we used to share 1800 1800 we had a rough kind of carpet dari and just wants a, a small pillow and rest the box minimum luggage maybe it could be packed in just one bag and at that time there was no internet when i came to delhi once i was standing outside of some cafe so there was a girl and she was reading a page then she selected some lines and that the lines got pasted on some another page and i was like how do she do that cut copy paste so i was looking that is this possible we can just pick some lines then i asked the cafe guy mai bhaiya ye kaise kiya how did you do this he said this is simple this is called cut copy paste mai ke this is not so simple for me tell me how did you do that so they were like that okay this is the page you click it then select it then the portion is in blue lines then go for a copy go for another slide and paste it and that becomes your uh, selected material that was one of the biggest invention for me because we were not having all the books and they were used to charge 10 rupees for one hour surfing so i would sit there searching what is virginia wolf story what are the characters so after this thing i started selecting lines if i am reading virginia wolf i found this paragraph is good i would pick that paragraph i would write it uh, paste it on another page then uh, giving some gap i would read something else again paste it and this is how i made my notes one print out one copy they would charge 2 rupees at that time now i think they are charging 5 so i would have my own print outs and surfing on net helped me a lot because we had no guidance so all we had this like just search the person read whatever you can so that was one of the biggest uh, development for us and those who are st uh, studying here i've seen those days no cooler no chilled water and uh, eating these gsr thali 25 rupees thali at that time one person would give by 20 20 rupees so i would go for that person saving 5 rupees because that 5 rupees were used for tea when you are studying you need tea all the students who are you know spending lot of hours then tea is an energy drink for us so i would be like even 25 rupees thali has the same quality low quality food 20 rupees thali same low quality food so let's say 5 rupees for tea and uh, he would give a kind of dal a kind of dal not the proper dal and some chapatis with one achar pickle so with the support of that pickle and dipping it in the dal i would eat remaining 5 rupees were used for the tea these all these people they are known nepali chai wala was a treat for us like 8 10 din mein thoda paisa bachta tha so we would go for nepali chai wala and nepali has a habit if you give him 2000 rupee note he will give you the change he'll not say anything and he doesn't look at you he'll be like taking his mug and he'll fill the cups and he will not even look at you <laughs> we have done those things winters mein garden mein padte the the jo rose garden hai 
so the outer area is good to study andar wala area mein is wordsworth keats and romanticism is there ha huh. <laughs> high level romanticism so better you just stay in this side only and we were so rural people my friend when we uh, went for a walk we saw a lot of couples so he was so innocent he said ye log ko paisa milta hai kya like jaise baithne ka garden mein so the garden is a tourist place we would come to watch them hum log itne gaon se hai <laughs> and coming from the background of rajasthan we are more typically uh, having those kind of a strong mindsets that uh, okay even if we have girls in the class we are not allowed to talk so first of all we never had my graduation post graduation all was boys boys and boys pg me there were some girls but again there was a big issue even if you ask a pen so we had that mindset that okay we don't have to talk so you come to delhi and then you see are it's this is this so you don't believe that this is reality i would get ashamed when i would see kids talking in english chote chote bacche first time went to mall first time i couldn't believe that there is a coffee of 250 rupees i was like 250 ka coffee hota hai 10 rupees ka milta hai to एंड कौन पागल है जो ढाई सौ की कॉफी पिएगा एक हफ्ते का खाना आ जाता है सब्जी आ जाती है नाउ द स्टार बक्स दे आर चार्जिंग एट हंड्रेड नाइन हंड्रेड सो हाँ फॉर मी दो रिवोल्यूशनरी आई कुडेंट बिलीव ऐसे लोग भी होते हैं जो बिना सोचे ढाई सौ का कॉफी पीते हैं इफ आई हैव टू गो फॉर दैट कॉफी दैट वुड बी एन अ सेलिब्रेटेड डे सिक्स मंथ्स में एक बार शायद अगर ढाई सौ को पिया दो सो वी कम फ्रॉम दैट लाइफ अब आज ये आदत है कि इफ देर इज नो ए सी वर्किंग आई बी लाइक टेक्सटिंग डेम प्लीज एसी चलाओ मेरे को नहीं पता आई डोंट केयर सो दिस इज अ फ्रॉम दैट लेवल टू दिस लेवल सो ऑल यू हैव टू डू जस्ट वर्क हार्ड आई नेवर थॉट आई विल बी रीचिंग टू दिस लेवल जस्ट वर्क हार्ड थिंग्स आर पॉसिबल आई वाज स्पीकिंग टू जोहा अभी एक स्टूडेंट आए हुए हैं जिनका गेट क्वालिफाइड हुआ है तो हम लोग बात कर रहे थे तो uh, उनका इंटरव्यू आएगा एंड शी इज द वन हु नेवर स्टॉप्ड शी केप्ट ऑन वर्किंग नाउ शी इज इन्वॉल्व्ड इन आईआईटी पीएचडी सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग द पीएचडी टॉपिक्स एंड ऑल she is the one coming from the same background father is the businessman seeing the father's business girls got the idea that we can also go for a business of perfumes ab unhone ghar baithe instagram se perfume business shuru kar diya you have these kind of people so if you have decided that you will never give up there will be hundreds of ways for you raste bante jayenge chalo let's get back to othello the another important character see the first thing that you have to remember that othello has been introduced as a moor Moor stands for a savage, a tribal, or we can simply say an outsider. The word outsider is not an ordinary word if it is used in post-colonial references. Othello has been studied from post-colonial mindset. There is the idea of racism. There is the idea of us other mentality. so before we go for the story i must tell you what is us other mentality a theory propounded by the post colonial author edward said believed to be the father of post colonialism famous work orientalism orientalism 1978 we will discuss this thing in post colonials edward said very important author his personal life his personal identity is very much attached to identity crisis of post colonials us other mentality hum us is hum other wo yeah us other mentality orientalism is the name of the book written by him right he actually divided the world in two parts the east and the west that was already a division he calls them occidents occidents and orients occidents and orients the world according to the post colonial analysis is divided in two parts the orients the easterns arabia india pakistan or all the indian uh, side the indian uh, asian subcontinent that's all eastern that's all orient the oriental civilization the these people they are the occidents occidents were the superior richer better than us and why they were richer and better than us why these people the white people were richer better superior than us 
because they are the writers they are calling themselves <laughs> how does it matter who who is that would say so he is dividing this thing that the westerns because you know westerns explored the uh, world they started finding us searching us so they started believing that we are the superior people you are the not uh, civilized uh, uncivilized people you are the tribals they must have come to india so when they came to india they found multiple uh, rituals uh, things they felt that this is uh, either stupid or unnecessary just like sati pratha tradition sati pratha tradition is actually stupid right why to kill a lady so they had these kind of mindset for india they used to call us the land of snake charmers sapero ka desh hai oriental myths are used by authors orients was always something exciting for them so the mindset is that this is us this is others us other mentality and it is applicable everywhere us other mentality also comes in feminism us is your ethnicity you relate your ethnicity us something stands for ethnicity others is anybody who doesn't belong to your ethnicity or you don't call that person one of you there was a very good movie mulk some uh, rishi kapoor was there i think and uh, what is the name of the girl tapsi pannu she is doing serious movies so if you watch that mo uh, movie mulk it's between hindu muslim issues the lawyer keeps on saying wo 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 log rishi kapoor objects this who is wo log why it's not hum so the moment you choose your identity the moment you find your type cast and relate people like you the others become others for you racial issues so whites are whites rest are others caste issues us are us rest are others so the world has multiple us other concepts and that's what they study in othello every white is us hum and the others have a different perspective the others othello is the other the outsider because he is not a white he is a black this is what you have to understand othello is not an ordinary story you have to find out the idea of racism if you go to london you live with them for hundreds of years will you become one of them until unless your skin your appearance looks like one of them it he is called father of postcolonialism one of the first leading author he is called there are many others also see who is the president of uk uh, prime minister of uk rishi sunak so why he is not an english man he has all the identities of english man citizenship of england he just got married to an indian girl daughter of sudha murthy but what else makes him indian how is an indian we didn't know him nobody knew him the moment he became prime minister everybody like oh one indian becomes the pm of uk we are happy one of us becomes the pm of uk then what's wrong with sonia gandhi if sonia gandhi becomes pm of india no 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 she is an italian she is an outsider so you don't want an outsider to rule you but you want one of us to rule them this is us other mentality concept rishi sunak lives there studies there has all the habits of the english people but then why we are living that identity indian this is called ethnicity essentialism the color face appearance our body structures we are divided in multiple races aryans mongolites so he belongs to the asian uh, appearance we call them indians or something like that we say salman rushdie is an indian no he doesn't have the indian citizenship uh, this famous writer bharti mukherjee she lives in america so one interviewer asked her that how do you feel being an indian author in america she just rebuked her she said excuse me i am an american author why are you calling me an indian author why are you cleansing that identity to me i am an american what makes me an indian my name bharti mukherjee have you seen the movie namaste london so let's find out the post colonial references in namaste london when katrina kaif is the heroine and she meets the white people there is a ship party right cruise party so one britisher calls her and says that what's her name she said jazz her name is jasmeet 
but there they call it jazz <laughs> right so he says that naming you like one of us doesn't make you one of us hamara naam copy kar lo humse hamare jaise banoge nahi so even if you're spending hundreds of years the ethnic identity can never be changed and they will always live with this thing upon you she says i am in british i am a british i sing long live the queen she is trying to defend her identity later she realizes that no i am not one of them same happens in passes to india written by em foster passes to india dr aziz thinks that i am a friend of whites i can be one of them i am like them but th when the things get a change the whites are whites all the whites stand for the whites all the browns stand for the browns and dr aziz realizes his ethnic identity and when the end of the story comes mr fielding meets dr aziz and says hello dr aziz we are still friends right he says no not here not under that sky that's a very important thing you'll have to understand the world is divided like this now this is not that much serious because post colonials are the topics and people who are studying they are understanding this thing now we are better we are becoming a global uh, identities so now the racial issues are not that much but it still exists it still exists in india also caste issues color issues the color supremacy who said white color is better who decided that god krishna was not uh, white ram has been called not white then how the white color became better it is the white people who came to india and enslaved us for 200 years so we started seeing the white 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 the white uh, fascination white fantasy and now these things are deeply rooted in our brains and that's the reason india is one of the biggest market of fair and lovely fair and handsome paanch rupaye mein gora pan <laughs> i'll teach you all these things in post colonials there will be hundreds of name azaz ahmed aayega ethnic nepotism azaz ahmed ka concept hai in theory mein imagine this thing if fair and lovely fair and handsome actually works then it is the africa which will be the biggest market <laughs> they'll be selling their half of the properties to buy those things but you know the fear and being uh feeling inferior uh, inferior superior on the basis of color that deeply rooted here and that's why they have used it as a market but remember this thing <laughs> never forget this thing no matter how big is your dream repeating once again no matter how big is your dream say no to fairness face wash and cream <laughs> shall we get back to hello because in india girls get success by fair and lovely boys get success by gutka <laughs> hypocrite country <laughs> so see what happens othello is a moor and a black guy but he's a warrior theek hai so he's technically talented let's say that he's talented this is the concept that even being talented will he be respected othello people like him people adore him for his talent he is a warrior he can win the wars but then there are people who hate him his assistant iago and some others you can write down the names brabantio now what happens othello brabantio are friends othello comes to meet brabantio brabantio's daughter desdemona the fair white lady heroine desdemona is very much fascinated with the impossible task done by othello his bravery his honesty she is fascinated with that there is a line like this that i would feel thrill with his impossible task his stories amazingly uh, done things he is living a larger than life he is a kind of warrior brabantio's father brabantio's friend of othello so whenever they meet they talk othello tells his stories to brabantio desdemona is listening those stories hearing those stories she falls in love with him now desdemona is in love with othello desdemona is a white lady othello is an outsider a black but he's celebrated he's praised because he's needed so talent is fine requirement is good all is fine now what happens desdemona tells him about his love and they elope because father was not ready for the marriage so othello and desdemona they go for elopement they do love marriage 
Brabantio gets mad in anger. There is one more minor character, Roderigo, who wanted to marry Desdemona. Brabantio, father of the girl, Roderigo, who wanted to marry Desdemona, they find Othello and abuse him, curse him for abducting his daughter. He, he wanted to marry Desdemona. He is a royal person and he wanted to marry Desdemona. So he is unhappy. Brabantio is the father of the girl. They find Othello on the way. When they find Othello on the way, they challenge him. They say, you have abducted my daughter and we will kill you. And they have the swords. Othello speaks a heroic line. Keep thy swords in. This is a line in exam. This has been asked. That's why I'm making you write. Keep thy swords in. Keep thy swords in. Or the dew might rust them. Keep thy swords in, or the dew might rust them. This is Othello. He was a warrior. Introduced as a brave uh, mood, who was good with sword, not educated, just brave. Muscular, brave man. A killing machine. So they challenge him, and he replies that these tricks, these swords, cannot do anything, any harm to me. Keep thy swords in or the duke might rest them. Now, Brabantio has no options. So, Brabantio goes to the duke and pleads for justice. He tells the duke that Othello has kidnapped my daughter. And they keep calling him the black. Othello the black. Duke calls Othello. Othello appears with Desdemona. They both come in the court of the king. Where Duke questions and Desdemona tells that it is a love marriage. In the court of the Duke, Desdemona agrees that it is a love marriage and I have my own, uh, I'm, I, have, I have my consent, I have given my consent, it's a love marriage. So there is no forced marriage, there is no abduction, there is no kidnapping. Now the Duke cannot do anything. If it's a love marriage, Duke is out of this issue now. He says that, see, if it's a love marriage, I cannot say anything. Brabantio turns towards Othello and says the most important line. This line will play an important role. Brabantio looks at Othello and says, write down these lines. Look more if thou has eyes to see. Look more if thou has eyes to see. She has deceived her father. She has deceived her father and may thee. Look more if thou has eyes to see. She has deceived her father and may thee. Like if she can deceive her father, she can deceive you. Look more if thou, it's haj, the archaic spelling is hast, right? H-A-S-T, but technically it is has. Eyes to see. What does this mean, if thou has eyes to see? He has eyes. Ha, matlab, try to understand. If thou has eyes to see. The message is that try to understand what I want to say. See the reality. If she can deceive her father, she has deceived her father and made thee. So she can deceive you. Desdemona was a white lady and a beautiful one. Othello was a black guy. Othello somewhere had this inferiority and he is the one who plants this seed in the mind of Othello. That you can be cheated. Now after this they get married, things are off the scene. Othello has a personal story. Othello has two people in his command. Cassio a happening romantic kind of soldier, Iago. 
He is a wicked man, smart person, clever, shrewd. He has two commanders, Iago, the most important character and a villain, right? Igo, you can call it Igo. Now what happens? Technically, just after Othello, Igo is the one who has this uh, superiority. But he promotes Cassio, ignores Igo. Igo now has a reason, jealousy. He wants to take revenge. So what is the tug of war? That he has two generals under his command. Igo was the one deserving one, but Cassio is promoted over him. Cassio is a romantic boy, friendly, involved with Othello, loyal to Othello and has a charming personality. So Othello has promoted him. If the junior has been promoted and senior has been ignored, what can be the result? How many of you know IPS Kiran Bedi resigned because of this thing, her junior got promoted. So she did not accept it and she resigned. Kiran Bedi. So just like that, now Igo has harbored the jealousy and he wants to take revenge and he makes plans. He knows he cannot challenge Othello in a direct fight. So he just starts conspiring against him. He kills Rodrigo and then blames Othello. And then one day, Igo's wife, Emily, she works for Desdemona, the attendant of Desdemona. She works for her. Desdemona has been gifted by Othello. The gift is a beautiful hand carved handkerchief. There is a name carved and it's a handkerchief and gifted to the girl. Was like a big romal a hanky. Rodrigo. Rodrigo will be killed and blamed for Othello. Igo will kill him. Now see, Othello has gifted a hanky, a handkerchief to the girl. She misses it in the chamber. Emily finds it. Emily has that handkerchief. <laughs> Emily doesn't know. So she just gives it to her husband. That I don't know whose handkerchief is this, but it looks good. It is precious quality. So just take this. Maybe we can help. Igo finds it out that this is the handkerchief. Othello has given to his wife. Igo gives it to. Cassio. Cassio was a friend of Desdemona. Both of them. He was a friendly, uh, family friend. He would talk to both of them. Igo's wife. Desdemona assistant. Desdemona's work uh, assistant. Matlab, work, a friend or assistant. So, Cassio has that handkerchief. Othello finds the handkerchief. Othello already was suffering from that inferiority mindset. And uh, Cassio was this kind of man, a charming personality. So he jumps to the conclusion. He reaches to the conclusion that Desdemona has an affair with Cassio. And what I have gifted to Desdemona is passed on <laughs> to Cassio. And Cassio is flaunting that rumal in front of me. Thalo goes to Desdemona, starts cursing her, starts abusing her. And this is the scene where Desdemona does not defend herself. He starts cursing her, abusing her for being infidel, cheating, and strangulates her, suffocates her to death. Emily is there. Emily says, stop. Desdemona says, no, let it be. It's me and my, my husband. Desdemona doesn't speak in defense. She's loyal to her husband. She's like, let her, my husband, decide if he has chosen this. She gets killed. Who kills her? Othello. And after getting, uh, after getting Desdemona killed, it's Emily who tells him the truth. She says, horror, horror, horror. And you have just killed wife for no reasons. I gave that hanky. This is how it traveled. Othello realizes. And while she's telling the truth, Iago tries to kill Emily, but she's saved, right? And Othello, realizing his mistake, commits suicide. He stabs himself. This is how Othello dies. This is the story. Iago is left to be punished by the court. Now, some pointers, important things. Why Iago did not get killed when all the Shakespearean villains are killed by the heroes? A very important question. Othello, a warrior who would kill anyone, he, would not, he did not even hesitate before killing his own wife. 
why he spared the main villain why even hamlet a person like hamlet kills the main villain why othello didn't kill the main villain no if he was white othello must have killed a lot of people othello was a warrior he was known as a killing machine why othello doesn't kill iago but othello had all the reasons emily has told that it's my husband's plan he has killed his own wife for no reasons innocent wife so othello has all the reasons to kill iago then and he is not a coward man he is a man who speaks with swords then the point is when this play was performed this was the timing of 1604 now this is what you have to remember play was performed by 1604 and at this time the king james 1 was ruling it was not elizabeth elizabeth died by 1603 the new king was there 1604 james 1 jacobian a started now please remember when james 1 became the king he wanted to be a good king for england because he was an outsider he came from scotland he was the scottish king so he came to handle the throne of england because after elizabeth there was nobody so a scottish king came to england wanted to be a good king james 1 said that i'm inspired from the roman king i want to be like a roman king what is the name of the roman king augustus caesar nephew of julius caesar so he says that i am inspired from the roman king augustus caesar i imitate his style i my ideas my virtues my talent is modeled upon him so technically he says that i am inspired from this man roman king augustus caesar roman king augustus caesar maintained peace in society by launching a rule pax romana pax romana you won't find these things in the normal books so that's why you have to remember that's why you're in the class pax romana launched by augustus caesar what does that mean peace of rome pax romana is peace of rome so under this act p a x pax though you can't see there please uh, see here pax romana peace of rome this act means peace of rome under this act peace of rome police reformations law and order reformations jurisdictions judiciary everything got reformed so technically that was a social development this man james 1 following roman king pax romana style he launched the act called pax britannia pax britannia peace of britain pax britannia peace of britain got it now peace of britain you must have seen the bollywood movies what happens in the end when police comes kanun ko apne haath mein mat lo kyun rest of the story were not there now you have reached so you are saying leave the villain kanun ko apne haath mein mat lo don't take the law and order in your hands respect the law and order shakespeare to have patronship to be one of the one person who follows the king shows that shakespeare has faith in pax britannia peace of britain by sparing iago on the mercy of judiciary he is giving a message that shakespeare supports pax britannia the law and order launched uh, launched by james 1 got it so this is a very important thing that why iago is not killed because hero is not weak we cannot say hero is not uh, hero was a weak man or hero could not kill him no hero is the one who killed his wife without even asking a question without even having a single hesitation so the simple idea is that to show the faith in judiciary the villain has been left on the mercy of judiciary got the new knowledge sashi tharur has written pax indica question we have ke exam ka this is also a question of net exam who has written pax indica shashi tharur pax indica peace of india now you know pax romana now you know pax britannia 
and you also know Pax India. Shashi Tharoor has written. He's an also an author, no? The great Indian novel, Why I'm a Hindu. Kancha Ilya wrote, Why I'm not a Hindu. So Shashi Tharoor replies by writing this book. He's an important author. There are questions like this. Exam questions there. Got it? Now, the other important thing that you have to see here. In this work, Igo is repeatedly using a device called Aside. Last net exam, there was a question of Aside. One of my qualified students told me this, that sir, attempting this question, I was just recalling your lecture. Because I had told you acting. Karke tha. So I do the acting for you also, don't worry. What happens when you speak on stage and you don't want to be heard by the characters but by the audience? The people who are performing on stage, they are not conscious about the audience because they have a different story. If Othello is here, Othello doesn't know that 21st century students are watching me. Now what if there are two characters, they are talking and third one is also there and he's just doing lip sync, speaking something that will not be heard by the other characters on the stage. Heard by the audience, obviously. That is called aside. Iago, whenever Othello says we will have this and that, Iago is like, mm -hmm, I'll tell you, let my time come, I'll tell you. So he's speaking softly, not to be heard by them. We do that. Aside, we all do that. No? When you fight with your siblings, you say something, and then other person, what did you say? Come again? Says, so nothing, nothing. When you have a sarcastic comment, you don't have sarcasm. Russian formalism, I'll give you this example. There is, a, there is a father, he comes home. Father comes home and says to elder son, bring me a glass of water. The elder son denies. He says, please go and take. Father gets angry. Father says, I said, give me a glass of water. The elder son says, please, Papa, please take it, please. The younger one gets up in anger and says, Papa, he is stupid. He is duffer. Don't worry. You go take water and bring a glass for me. <laughs> That's an example of Russian formalism, actually. So simply, if you see, speak something which should not be heard by the characters, somebody is saying this, this and that, and then you are saying something on the stage, that's aside. So whenever they are talking about good things, I go keeps on saying, don't worry, I will not let you smile, I will spoil this and that, and speaks if, uh, on the stage. Got it? Aside. Anybody still not, didn't get it? Soliloquy, no words. Soliloquy, only thoughts. Dramatic monologue, one person speaking on the stage with no interruption at all. No disturbance. One person, long speech. That's, that's dramatic monologue. Any questions for aside? Hmm? It is for the audience. Audience need to know everything. If the audience don't listen, what is the use of aside? They are not listening, audience are not listening, then why is speaking even? It is the audience who gets curious that, oh, this man is villain. This man is villain. Right? Aside, huh, these kind of questions are asked. Actually, you know, the questions, the problem is, students get confused. So, loki kya hai, monologue kya hai, dramatic monologue kya hai. And when you go for the theoretical things, there will study monologism, dialogism, polyphony, advanced level things. So, what happens, if you have not studied properly, you will mess up these things, the basic things. One of the worst approach to qualify any exam is that students buy some market guidebook and start mugging up. If you mug up thousands of questions, you will still be not able to qualify. Because if you do not have the concepts clear and you are not able to recollect those things, you cannot relate those things. You will not be able to qualify. Aside comes in Iago's style. So this is a very important one. Soiloki has been uh, made famous by uh, Shakespeare only. Right? Then we'll go to Victorians, Robert Browning, Matthew Arnold and others, Tennyson. They will all come with dramatic monologues. Then we'll go for modern age, one act comedy, one act tragedies, then absurds. Every age has a new style. Every genre has a new style. Got it clear? Now let's go for the other works. I'll teach you post-colonials. There also a reference will come. 
there is a writer post colon writer if you want to know the reference tayyab sali he is from sudan seasons to the migration to the north it's a post colonial work in this work we will have a reference of othello tayyab sali he is the author from sudan he will be the part of our post colonial classes he has a character in the book mustafa he has a uh, character mustafa mustafa is very much fascinated with the western world just like many of us are fascinated with the western world so in fact when i teach you post colonials i'll also tell you the idea of the world when you use the idea of the world so mustafa wants to go abroad mustafa gets the chance goes and uh, when he uh, goes to uh, the western world he was a charming personality happening personality jolly person cracking jokes being nice to everyone an extrovert he returns after many years and now he's keeping mum he doesn't talk to people he avoids the crowd and whenever some people try to talk to him and he gets irritated he repeats a line there is no othello othello was a lie there is no othello othello was a lie this is the famous line that comes here you know these kind of questions come in exam he is from sudan people say sir out of syllabus paper nahi they are the most important post colonial authors he says there was no othello othello was a lie there was no othello othello was a lie let's go for the another and most important story The next one we have is King Lear. The another story which is very important and uh, is famous for feminist perspectives. The next story we have is King Lear. King Lear was a majestic king. He had three daughters. Goneril. Regan Cordelia remember their names three daughters then two important ministers earl of kent earl of gloucester they have many characters in the subplot actually Gloucester has two sons Edmund Edgar Main story is that the story of the daughters Earl of Kent K E N T and Earl of Gloucester Lord Gloucester Ye dos ke ministers hain and Gloucester has two sons Edmund and Edgar Gloucester has two sons Edmund and Edgar There are some minor characters Duke Cornwall Duke Albany they are minor characters no need to go for all those characters So what happens King Lear is almost 70 80 years old man is a big king uh, covers a big patch of land his property is real big so he wants to divide his properties and when he wants to divide his property he calls his daughters for a test वो बोलता है कि टेल मी क्लेम योर लव फॉर योर फादर क्लेम योर लव फॉर योर फादर ही सेज वॉट्स माई इंपॉर्टेंस इन योर लाइफ सो दिस इज हाउ ही ट्राइज टू टेस्ट द लॉयल्टी ऑफ द गर्ल्स द लव एंड रेस्पेक्ट फॉर द फादर कॉल्स थ्री ऑफ देम सेज टेल मी हाउ मच यू अडोर मी हाउ मच यू लव मी फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड गॉनरिल एंड रीगन they go for an exaggerated narration father you are the god you are this you are that there is no life without you you have given us birth you have given us identity 
you have given us social respect everything is because of you father is father cordelia third one cordelia is blunt straightforward or we can say incompetent with words and situations she comes and says simple you're just a father i'm just a daughter nothing to be exaggerated no hyperbolic reference she says i adore you love you as a father a girl should love her father not more than that not less than that why should i exaggerate a daughter and a father have they have natural bonding i have that so i cannot exaggerate that okay my love for you is something very different it's something that a daughter should have for her father simple bond what you have done as a father is the duty of a father so nothing new what i have done as the duty of the daughter nothing new it's normal but then this infuriates king lear he doesn't want to listen these words you know abhi teachers day aayega na september 5 teachers day everybody will say you are the best teacher koi aayega sir there are hundreds of teachers you are one of them for me every teacher is good i learn from every one for me all the teachers are best sir you are not special so even if you say that nobody wants to listen this sir na as a human being we want like ha ah, ha yeah, i am the best teacher for you don't worry <laughs> nobody wants to have the blunt words right <laughs> straight forward words cordelia goes for this thing this is her hamarshia being too blunt or straight forward right so she simply says that the bond is natural nothing to be exaggerated king lear doesn't like it he says sharper than a serpent's tooth write it write the lines sharper than a serpent's tooth saap se bhi zyada tez daant sharp sharper than a serpent's tooth how sad it is how sad it is this is this is what i teach in upsc also so it's almost all my tips how sad it is to have a thankless child a child who is not thankful how sad it is to have a thankless child uh i think you were there in the class two days back three days back we did hamarsha uh have thankless child don't worry i'll repeat it again for you hamarsha is excess of virtue or a fatal flaw one mistake that becomes the reason of a downfall that has been called hamarshia ha huh. one mistake in your character or some virtue in excess you remember we have talked about this thing we all say that speak the truth support the truth but then we discuss this thing that everybody starts speaking truth the world will end there was a movie by govinda kyunki main jhoot nahi bolta so his son prays that please god make my father speak the truth and then he says subah se main sach bol raha hu i am speaking the truth from the morning and half of the city is my enemy if you actually start speaking the truth if you actually start speaking the truth we will have no society society ka base hi jhoot pe hai <laughs> and that's not it's not me who is saying this this is plato what he has said derrida he will say that he says that the world is based on a fundamental lie there is no inherent truth we are aliens casted in an alien universe with no truth at all the moment you start speaking the truth nothing but the truth the world will be destroyed can you go back to your neighbor and you just say that the day i get chance i'll just kill you this is the truth <laughs> you can't say that you can't talk to your siblings are because of you the property is going to be divided in half and half kal maine meme padha tha usme likha tha chote bhai ko kota padhne bheja tha taki property meri ho jaye niche likha tha sala pass ho gaya aa gaya so side nahi kiya iste baap so if you start speaking the truth the truth will destroy the life right so cordelia's hamarsia is that overtly truth itna blunt nahi hona tha itna sach nahi bolna tha so she is uh, okay then now there are people they want to marry uh, cordelia there are many people they have come to marry her but when king lear expels her out of kingdom 
and disowns her. He says, now no more property. All the other kings, they return. Only the Duke of France ap appreciates her honesty and marries her. So when Cordelia has been disowned by her father, expelled from the kingdom, all other suitors, all the people who came to marry her, they return. Just Duke of France. Duke of France marries her for being honest girl. Now they are off the scene. But one more thing. When he was expelling her, he was asking her to leave. Earl of Kent, he protested. He said, no, you should not expel her. She is telling the truth. We should respect her opinion. But King Lear is so angry. He's so much mad in anger that he asked the, this man, Kent, to leave. Kent is also expelled. Now, Cordelia is married. Kent is, and he was a loyal man. He was a good man. So he's also expelled. Now, once the scene comes uh, to an end, we see Goneril and Regan are talking to each other separately. They are alone. They are talking to each other. And Goneril and Regan claim, they confess that they think their father is a fool, stupid man. And they both actually confess that they have fooled the father. And now they are happy because they have taken the property. King Lear has taken, uh, what do you call that? Retirement. He has 100 knights in his command. He says that only 100 knights will serve me. Rest of the kingdom is divided in Goneril and Regan. So he keeps 100 knights in his command. Rest of the property has been divided. But Goneril and Regan soon come and say that, Papa, what will you do with these 100 knights? So they start cutting all these things, all the privileges. Soon King Lear realizes his mistake. That I have divided the powers in my daughters and they are good for nothing and they have cut short all my powers, all my property. When he, and they finally have some heighted words where they abuse and curse him. King Lear runs out of the palace. He is in anger. And when he runs out of the palace, he has lost his mind, sanity. That scene is called the storm scene, the famous storm scene in King Lear. When King Lear gets cheated by his daughters, he realizes that he has done blunders, a big mistake. And in blunders, in big mistake, he has expelled the good daughter, did injustice to the most loyal daughter. He gets mad in anger. His mind is blocked. He doesn't know what to think. And he just leaves the palace, runs out. Girls don't even care. Their father is going out. There is a storm, uh, rain, torrential rains. They don't care. King Leo, an old man, cheated by daughters, uh, guilt-stricken, feeling guilty. He's in the storm. This storm scene is one of the most important scenes of King Leo. Here, King Lear is an old man, portrayed as old man, disabled man, disability, mental disability. Now here he has sympathies. Here he gets our sympathy. This is the downfall, a majestic king, one mistake. What was King Lear's hamarshia? To be flattered, he wanted to be flattered. One mistake and the downfall is that the King Lear is now a mad man, mad old man, despised man. Now, the storm scene is also studied as objective correlative. Objective correlative. Objective correlative is a very important concept. Here, the protagonist, the leading protagonist in the story the emotions of the characters or the protagonist or the hero are connected with nature, natural surroundings or nature. Nature and emotions of the leading character. It can be with other characters also, but primarily with the leading character. Emotions of the leading character and the nature, they have similarities. Emotions of the leading character and the nature, they have similarities. It enhances the dramatic effect. Why it is used? To enhance the dramatic effect. The nature and the emotions of the leading protagonist. They are similar, assimilated. It is used to increase the dramatic effect. Intensity of emotions. 
it intensifies the emotion that's called objective correlative term coined by washington elston maximum people go for ts eliot so don't make that mistake washington elston the term has been coined by washington elston maximum people go for ts eliot because he has studied it he has defined it shakespearean objective correlative is actually studied by ts eliot so some people they simply go for objective correlative ts eliot no it is washington elston make sure you remember that right now uh, to make it easy for you to make you understand it's quite easy when the hero is in anger you you have watched daily soap tv show they dekhte ho na daily soap dekhe honge na anupama ho gaya and all anup kahani ghar ghar ki saas bhi bahu thi what happens when there is some sensational conversation is going on they show the face sensational faces like this but what's there in the background khidki ke bahar thunder strike so when they are revealing something sensational why the weather is bad outside yes that's objective correlative in chacha choudhary comics it was written that whenever sabu would have anger some volcano would blast relation anger blast sensation thunders lord shiva if you watch the series of shiva they show that shiva has anger the volcanoes are blasting the oceans are having tsunamis this is objective correlative when there are romantic songs what is the background of the romantic songs flowers switzerland kashmir delhi ka traffic dikhate because that's a romantic song so the background flowers valleys meadows they will add the intensity aisa nahi hoga garmi mein pasina poch ke hero gana ga raha hai tujhe dekha to ye jana sanam kyunki fir relate nahi hoga ठीक है फिर रिलेट नहीं होगा तो वहां पे एक ऐसा चाहिए होगा एक अच्छा सा बैकग्राउंड ऐसे हाथ करके करने के लिए गॉट इट एंड व्हेन दे हैव टू शो दैट हीरो इज वर्किंग हार्ड हीरोज लाइफ इज अ वेरी टफ लाइफ देन दे विल शो हिम वर्किंग इन द सन लाइट एंड विल रिपीटेडली डू लाइक दिस एंड लुकिंग एट द सन एंड विल बी लाइक ओह ही इज वर्किंग हार्ड एंड दे आर शोइंग दैट हीरोइन इज गोइंग टू फेस सम प्रॉब्लम्स हीरोइन इज रनिंग द विलेंस आर आफ्टर हर आफ्टर हर सो इट्स अ नाइट थंडर स्ट्राइक बारिश हो रही है to add the intensity now the storm in the mind of king lear and the storm in the nature that's objective correlative to make the audience understand you feel bad for him that he has been cheated destroyed and when he runs out you feel bad that this old man just one mistake and he is roaming in the storm so storm scene is the scene where we uh, have our sympathies for king lear here he becomes our tragic hero right the parallel stories the parallel story is glucester has two sons edmund and edgar he is a good friend of king leo edmund is a bastard son edgar is a good man a good son edmund is a bastard son Edmund doesn't like his father Gloucester. He wants to take revenge. In fact, he will make him blind. So Edmund wants to take revenge from his father. He also cheats him. He attacks him and makes him get convinced that it is Edgar behind that attack. Gloucester expels Edgar. Edgar goes for a disguise under the name Tom O Bedlam. Under the disguise Tom O Bedlam. Edmund is a bad son, bastard. Eh? Edmund wants to kill his father, so he gets him attacked, and then shows that it is Edgar who has tried to kill you. He frames Edgar that to be the king, Edgar is trying to kill you, but it is Edmund who is the bad man. So King, uh, the, uh, this man Gloucester expels Edgar. Now Edgar is in disguise. He is left. He has left the kingdom. He becomes this man Tom of Bedlam. Keeps on singing the songs. now edmund makes him blind edmund has affairs with both regan and goneril regan and goneril both have affairs with edgar 
when they both get to know that both of these sisters have affair with same man they start hating each other they get jealous they both will commit suicide at the end they both had their husbands cheating uh, they were uh, like they were cheating their husbands lord cornwall duke of albany their names are not important just telling you the story their names are not important just remember this that these two girls having affair with edmund then they try to kill their husbands also later they will commit suicide king leo will be rescued in the madness it will be rescued by cordelia cordelia will come to rescue the father when they will be rescued cordelia with the france french army they will try to fight with edmund but there they will be defeated cordelia will be killed king leo a man who has lost everything everything that has been lost he will go to pick his daughter's body in the hands that's one of the most tragic scene king leo is not able to believe she is dead she is in the hands glocester kent they both are there and this is how the story ends a old poor man who has lost everything king leo ki ek bahut achhi line aati hai i'll make you write some quotations there are many quotations like for flies for the wanton boys we are to the gods they kill us for their sport are there are lines like this he is the unluckiest man i have ever seen there are many quotations from king leo now let's go for the theoretical approach once we are done with these things we will go for selected quotations from all the works you will have a separate list of quotations now see this thing in king leo there are two important things that you have to understand first hamarshia hamarshia for king leo hamarshia for cordelia second thing is feminism what if we have to go for feminist analysis of king leo feminist analysis of king leo who is the most feminist character strong female character why not gondril and regan this is what you are making a mistake all of these female characters are strong characters gondril and regan are not female weak or weak female characters they are good enough to cheat they are good enough to plot they are well versed in politics they are trained they are strong so when you study king lear from feminist point of view remember from feminist point of view all of these characters are strong female characters when we talk about weak female characters the weak female characters are the one who are dominated by the male controlled by the male authority is male here gondril has planned everything regan has planned everything they have guts to cheat the father they have guts to plot the things they have guts to cheat their husbands so technically they are clever and strong characters just like cordelia so there is no weak female character in king lear and that's why it is a question because whenever we go for this study feminist we try to find out some weak character or somebody is the strong character so here we have all the characters who are strong characters you remember this point yaad rahega na so don't forget the storm scene let's finish macbeth also stretch kar do continue hai na स्ट्रेच कर दें ना उसके बाद प्रॉपर फ्री कर दूंगा मैकबेथ हैमलेट ओथेलो किंग लियर मैकबेथ दिस इज द ऑर्डर इफ यू फॉर्गेट द ऑर्डर एच ओ के एम हैमलेट ओथेलो किंग लियर मैकबेथ इट्स अ फोर टू फाइव टाइम आस क्वेश्चन रिमेम्बर द ऑर्डर हाँ एच ओ के एम ये बहुत रिपीटेड क्वेश्चन इट्स अ रिपीटेड वन बट डोंट मेक मिस्टेक्स especially uh, having the offline class if you make silly mistakes that's something that cannot be pardoned i just had a meeting with one of my brilliant student and she had amazing memory with no background of english or teacher she came to join so i asked her that don't join now come for next batch because uh, you have no background of english and you are mostly involved in uh, other subjects you are preparing for government jobs so don't come she said sir i have this chance only 3 months I said, "See, I cannot take any responsibility for your success." She said, "Sir, whatever you will teach, I will do it." And I tell you this thing: within two to three days, she started answering questions in the class. Within ten, fifteen days, everybody believed that she is a JRF material. We also got shocked when she missed it by two percentile. So I had just uh, a word with her now. She is one of the rarest students I call back to talk about the failure. 
because the, her father called me that she is not able to believe. I said, sir, I am not able to believe. She was working very hard. So the mistake was that somewhere she took paper one lightly. And that paper one, she said, sir, I missed three, four questions in paper one. So do not do or repeat this mistake until unless you are qualified. I've seen sometimes people say I'm good in maths. I've done teaching aptitude or I'll watch some videos at home. Please, the teacher who is going to teach, sometimes they can bring new concepts. So take paper one seriously. My percentile in paper one is 43. Imagine if I just read and revise paper one, what would be my percentile? Even if it is bad, at least I'll have 86 percentile, 88 percentile, which is bad. 43 is worst. So imagine my score in English, total score. But for me, paper one is not my area, not my task. I'm not involved. But for you, it is needed. So don't miss any paper one class. They keep on working. Now see, let's go for this story. Very important story. The story is, a story is set in Scotland. This is a very interesting story. It has supernatural characters. We have three witches. We have three witches. So this story has supernatural characters. It is set in Scotland. What happens here? When the opening scene starts, we find three witches. They are preparing some cauldron, cooking something, adding some mysterious things. See, right? Rat and all these things they are adding in it. They are making some delicious, according to them. But they are singing a song. And the song is, where shall we meet again? Opening lines of Macbeth. Where shall we meet again? Thunder. Lightning. Or in rain. Where shall we meet again? Thunder, lightning or in rain. So these girls, these sorry witches, they are dancing around the cauldron, cooking something mysterious, adding a lot of uh, unique things. And they are hovering around the cauldron, singing, dancing. And the lines are like, where shall we meet again? Thunder, lightning, or in rain. And then they have a line, repeated line after this. Fair is foul, foul is fair. Fair is foul, foul is fair. This is the line they repeatedly use in this song. Fair is foul, foul is fair. Now when this uh, ritual is going on, they are having some ritual or they are doing something. This is the time Macbeth, a brave commander, is returning from a war. So Macbeth comes across and Macbeth finds these three witches. Macbeth comes across, he is returning from a war, he had just won a battle. Three witches welcome him. They say, welcome. Thane of Codder. Welcome Thane of Codder. Thane of Glamis. They address Macbeth that, O oh, brave Macbeth, welcome the Thane of Codder, welcome the Thane of Glamis. They mention him. Now Macbeth stops and says, that I am just Thane of this place. Thane is a post, just like Earl, Duke. So we're talking about Scotland. So maybe this was a word for the Dukes. So he says, why are you welcoming me with another position, another post? I am just the Thane of Codder. Why are you calling me that Thane of Glamis? Witches say, you will become. It is a prophecy. So they have given a prophecy that don't worry, you're going to be the Thane of Glamis. Macbeth is not alone. Macbeth has his friend Benko with him. Macbeth's friend Benko. He is with him. And they say, your children will be the king. Your children will be the king. Benko. So they say that you will be the thane of Glamis. 
यू विल बी द किंग ऑफ स्कॉटलैंड इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्टोरी विच इज सपोज यू गोइंग बैक यू फाइंड अ बाबा एंड ही सेज ओ वेलकम वाइस चांसलर ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली and then like what yes you will be vice chancellor of the university of delhi so it won't we will not trust it but what if it actually happens next day they call you that sir please be the vice chancellor of delhi university so they welcome macbeth with these names they address macbeth with these things and they say that don't worry you will be the king of scotland and benko your children will be the king of scotland macbeth doesn't pay attention and he's like he continues his journey after some hours some soldiers come to welcome macbeth they say we have been sent by king duncan we have been sent by king duncan king of scotland to welcome you we are happy with your victory you have made us proud and king duncan has appointed you thane of glemis got it Macbeth doesn't listen to them. He doesn't care. Now, when he's continuing his journey, some soldiers come to welcome him. They say, "We have been sent by the king. King is so happy with your performance in the battlefield that king has appointed you as the thane of Glamis." Means, one prophecy got fulfilled immediately. Got it? Any confusions? Raise your hands. I'll I'll repeat it. Yeah, tell me from where you missed it. See, the witcher said that you are going to become these things. Now, when he started walking, after few hours, one two hour, some soldiers came to welcome him. They said, "We have come to receive you, and everybody is happy. You have won the war, and there is a good news for you. King has appointed you as the thane of Glamis. Prophecy is Bhavishyamani. Okay." so one prophecy that you will become it got fulfilled got it now he has become thane of glamis thane of cawdor he was he goes home and there the most important character in literature lady macbeth critics call her the fourth witch of macbeth but that's a patriarchal mindset so you don't have to answer that you don't have to write that the patriarchal critics the old critics they would call her the fourth witch lady macbeth is a very ambitious character and a very strong personality if you study from feminist perspective she is a strong woman macbeth comes home just like ordinary husband he tells what has happened he tells i met the witches then this happened lady macbeth says wait 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 you met the witches and the witches told you something which actually got fulfilled he says yes that happened She says, "What else they said?" He says, "I'll be the king of Scotland." Macbeth takes it lightly. Lady Macbeth takes it seriously. She says, "Really, we should trust them. You should be the king of Scotland. You deserve to be the king of Scotland." He says, "How? I cannot do that. King Duncan is there. I'm a loyal person. Duncan has two sons, so it is not possible that I can become." डंकन के बेटों का नाम था मैकडोनल्ड मेलकम एंड डोनल्ड जस्ट टू रिमेंबर आई कॉल दम मैकडी हा सो दैट आई डोंट फॉरगेट दम मैकडी महाराजा भर्ग सो डंकन हैज टू सन्स मेलकम एंड डोनल्ड सो जस्ट रिमेंबर द बर्गर्स देर इज अ बुक ऑन बर्गर बर्गर्स डॉटर नैड इन गॉडिमर हैज रिटन दैट बर्गर्स डॉटर सो he says that this is not possible because king is there duncan and if he dies he has two sons it is not possible lady macbeth says it is possible you have to make it possible don't sit idle thinking that the god will do things for you god has given you a signal it is you who has to take the action it is you who has to do something do something don't sit idle he says what what should i do there is no direct way to be a king i cannot kill the king i cannot kill the sons this discussion is going on 
वाइफ से इज दैट यू शुड ट्राई एटलीस्ट कोशिश करो ट्राई दिस नथिंग गोइंग टू हैपन विदाउट यू ट्रायल वेन द कन्वर्सेशन इज गोइंग ऑन अ सोल्जर और मैसेंजर कम्स विद द इंफॉर्मेशन किंग डंकन इज गोइंग टू विजिट यू टू नाइट ही विल हैव डिनर विद यू एंड ही विल बी द गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर टूडे ही विल स्टे विद यू इन योर पैलेस सोल्जर क्या बोलते हैं Duncan will be in your palace. He will spend a night here. Lady Macbeth says, "The God is favoring us. You don't have to go to the palace to kill the king. The king is coming here. This is an opportunity. A smart man never misses the opportunity. See, the stars are in our favor. The God is in our favor. King himself is coming here. This is the destiny. You must do things. He is again. He is hesitating." nervous and an honest man he doesn't want to do this he's a loyal man he says he trusts me he adores me i've been getting all my re re rewards i cannot do these things this discussion is going on going on going on finally lady macbeth starts challenging the masculinity of macbeth she raises her hands and says unsex me here go god se bolti hai i wish i were a man I would have killed. You are a scared person, a coward man. Murder nahi ho tum. Kisi ko uksana ho to this is enough na. You must have seen in politics. Chodiyan udhe jaake netaon ko de dete hain. This is again wrong. This is a wrong practice. Why are you giving bangles to the leaders, showing that you are coward? Do you think bangle is a proof of cowardice? Iska matlab aap khud hi accept kar rahe ho ki ye log chodiyan pehen lo kyunki tumse nahi ho raha hai. So is this bangle is actually a symbol? ये तो गलत है ना तो होना चाहिए दिस इज द पार्ट ऑफ फेलोगोसेंट्रिसम पावर स्ट्रक्चर लैंग्वेज बैंगल्स कनेक्टेड टू कवर डाइस वीकनेस पीपल टू बॉयज विल फाइट एंड लाइक आ जाओ कम ऑन मैंने चूड़िया नहीं पहनी है व्हाट डज दैट मीन सो चूड़िया पहनने वाले डरपोक होते हैं so she raises the question of masculinity she says are yaar what kind of man you are i wish i were a man i would have done that now his masculinity challenge male ego is challenged he says but how what how to do that she says don't worry we will have dinner i will mix something in the dinner guards will be drugged and we will kill him in the sleep now they have finally made the plan Lady Macbeth has convinced Macbeth to kill Duncan. Duncan comes. They have the dinner with the king. Guards are given some kind of intoxicating thing. They are intoxicated. They are drugged. Now, in the midnight, Duncan is also sleeping. In the midnight, they both go to the corridors to check Duncan. so when they see through the window lady macbeth plays a different role here she becomes feminine she says he looks like my father while sleeping who duncan he looks like my father while sleeping i cannot kill him she has provoked her husband to kill him when they go to have a check before killing him she says oh he looks like my father while resting while sleeping in his sleep he resembles my father he resembles my father i cannot kill him the feminine <laughs> personality comes then she says macbeth you go you do it now macbeth confused nervous unwillingly he's reluctant he doesn't want to go somewhere he, you know he's having confusion in his mind whether he should go or not he walks in the corridors and there the famous scene objective correlative dagger scene macbeth's dagger scene comes he finds some daggers hanging in the corridors usse apne samne talwar dikhti hai ise he tries to catch but is not able to catch so the dagger scene is a objective correlative which is telling his mental state that he is not sure whether he has to do this or not dagger scene the talwar usko apne samne aise latki hui dikhti hai he tries to catch 
Clear? Any confusions? So now he is walking stealthily. He sees those daggers, but he continues. He enters in the chamber. Duncan is in his sleep. He kills Duncan in the bed. The moment he kills him, a whispering sound is heard throughout the palace. A sound comes. Question of exam. Sleep no more. What does that mean? A sound, a divine sound. Sleep no more. The message is that killing someone is a sin. But you have killed that person in the most innocent phase. Even the worst person. If the person is sleeping, they look innocent. He was unarmed. He was, there was no arms. Disarmed person, sleeping innocently, unconscious about the things happening. You killed someone in the sleep. You corrupted that sleep. And this is the punishment. Sleep no more. Nobody will sleep in this palace now. This actually happens. After this killing, nobody sleeps. Things get worse. They cannot sleep. So this is a curse. Sleep no more. You have corrupted the sleep. He was innocent. You killed him in his sleep. So the curse is sleep no more. Because of this particular uh, punishment, you will see the most famous scene, Lady Macbeth, sleepwalking scene. You know, this was one of the most scary scenes for Elizabethan people. Sleepwalking. Imagine the horror movies. In the midnight, you are walking like this. Sleepwalking, Macbeth, Lady Macbeth. She is not able to sleep. She keeps on roaming in the palace, midnight, two o'clock, three o'clock. So I'll tell, I'll come to this story again. This is actually just a reference. Now Macbeth kills, gets horrified, runs back to Lady Macbeth and tells that I've done it, dead. Heavens will have curse, and I've done it. She says, "Where are your daggers?" He says, I dropped it in the bed. She says, do you know your royal daggers will be identified? Then she goes to pick the daggers. And here she becomes more, equally in, uh, more involved in the murder. She picks those daggers. Then uses the blood of Duncan. To apply it on the faces of the guards. The guards are drugged. They are sleeping outside. The blood is applied over the body and the face. And their swords are. This is how Lady Macbeth has blood on her hands. Next, and they go and sleep peacefully. They try to sleep. Next morning, there is a sound, a noise. Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, they reach and pretend to know that they have just woken up and they don't know what has happened. So they are like, okay, okay, what has happened? They say, Duncan has been killed. And the guards, shivering, clueless, no idea what has happened. They have blood on their faces and the swords. and They are just numb. Macbeth takes his sword out and kills the guards. That you could not do a duty. Now the guards are killed. There is no evidence. Duncan is killed. Knowing that, that some insider has killed Duncan. Magdi. They run away. Malcolm and Donald. They leave the city. They leave the palace. Technically, there is no king now. So Malcolm, Donald, they have run away. Duncan is dead. People believe that it can be Macbeth, but nobody can question him. He's a strong man. Macbeth declares himself the king. Second prophecy. Second prophecy fulfilled. Macbeth becomes the king. What was the third prophecy? Hmm? Yes. The third prophecy was that Banco's son, friend of Macbeth, best friend of Macbeth, Banco's sons will be the king. So Macbeth knows if these things are happening, that thing will also happen. So what should he do? He sends soldiers to kill Banco. Banco is killed. Banco is dead. His sons escape. Banco is dead. Now Macbeth invites everyone for a dinner. This is called banquet scene. 
Macbeth has invited all the knights to discuss the political conditions, issues after the death of Duncan. He has invited everyone. People doubt that it is Macbeth behind the killing, but nobody can ask openly. So they are there in the dinner. Everybody is there. Banco's chair is empty because Banco is dead and Macbeth knows it. But then here we have the ghost of Banco. His ghost appears. The soul of Banco comes to join the dinner. Macbeth starts talking to him. How is this possible? How can you be here? It is not possible. You should be dead. The others who are listening, they start getting clues. They get more ideas that, okay, it's Macbeth behind everything. So the banquet scene is very important because somewhere he does the confessions. How is this possible? Now, after this thing, Macbeth has become the king. Macbeth is ruling, but he's not a safe king. There are rebellions. And here by the side, Lady Macbeth, here she has done, st started doing sleepwalking. The problem is when she does the sleepwalk, she goes to clean her hands. So in midnight, she would wake up, walk like a ghost wearing a white dress, and then she would clean her hands. And the lines are like this, all the Arabian perfumes cannot sweeten my hand, it's blood, blood and blood. Write on this thing. All the perfumes of Arabia. All the perfumes of Arabia. All the perfumes of Arabia. Cannot sweeten my hand. What a reference. Today only the girl that uh, came to meet me, she gifted the Arabian perfume. <laughs> what a reference. I was talking about the girl. All the perfumes of Arabia. Cannot sweeten my hand. It's blood, blood and blood. Like she is wa uh, washing her hands. The message is that she has some involvement. The doctors and everyone, they listen to those lines. So they understand that she is equally responsible. Why she is having the sleepwalk? It's her guilt and that curse that you will not sleep again. Later she will die because of the sleepwalking and mental state of her. Megbeth is trying to secure his kingdom from all the potential rebellions. Because he has become the king, but there are so many people who are still loyal to Duncan. So Macbeth wants to be a secured king. And Macbeth knows that there is just one person, Macduff, who can fight against me. The only strong commander who was loyal to Duncan. His name is Macduff. So Macbeth knows that just one man can challenge my authority, can challenge my kingship. That's Macduff. Macduff was a good friend of him, a loyal commander, just like him. But to be a secured king, a safe king, he sends his soldiers to kill Macduff. He says, go, kill the Macduff, this man. Soldiers go to kill Macduff. Macduff was not there. So they end up killing his kids, his wife. Now, Macduff's wife and kids, both are killed. Macbeth is not happy with this. He like, doesn't like it. That why? But now, Macduff also has a reason to fight back, to take revenge. Macbeth is getting a lot of enemies from all the sides. Rebellions are there. Macbeth decides to meet the witches again, to know the future. Macduff runs away. Macduff will join these people. Now, what happens? He goes to meet the witches. Now the witches tell him more prophecies. He says, tell me about my future. Whatever you have said is happening. So tell me about my future. Witches say, you will not be defeated until the wood of Birnam walks. Birnam wood, jungle, forest, the wood of Birnam walks. So you will be an unchallenged king until unless the woods walk. Jab tak jungle chalna shuru nahi karta. The wood of Birnam walks. So the woods don't walk. Have you seen a forest walking? 
there are there are plants in african amazon jungle they are in the mud area so they change their locations there are plants they can kill you so wood of birnam walks first thing second no mortal no mortal with ordinary birth can kill you there is no man who has an ordinary birth can kill you macbeth becomes secure kyunki kya bolti hai which is कि एक तो जब तक जंगल चलेगा नहीं तब तक तुम्हें कुछ नहीं होगा और तुम्हें कोई भी आम आदमी एक साधारण जन्म के साथ नहीं मार सकता द कंडीशन आर दैट यू आर सेफ अंटिल अनलेस द वुड ऑफ बिरनम वॉक्स एंड नो मॉर्टल कैन किल यू हु हैज एन ऑर्डिनरी बर्थ वी ऑल हैव ऑर्डिनरी बर्थ सो मैकबे थिंग्स दैट मे बी द गॉड विल कम टू किल मी सो आई शुड फील सेफ फ्रॉम ऑल द मॉर्टल्स ऑल द ह्यूमन बींग्स मैकबे बिकम सिक्योर गोज बैक and now he gets information that malcolm donald macduff they have raised an army and they are coming they are approaching towards this uh, king uh, this king macbeth is getting ready for the war a soldier comes to him a soldier who is come uh, who has come to tell him the news is Uh, behaving like hysterical is behaving like mad he says sir 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 something is happening he says what he says the wood of bernam is walking soldier bolta sir i was at the castle top floor i saw the woods of bernam walking and approaching towards us macbeth says this is impossible he goes to the roof finds it out what has happened the soldiers the soldiers of malcolm donald and macduff they are in the woods and to cover themselves hide themselves they have taken the branches of the jungle so their numbers will not be disclosed the counting of the soldiers will be hidden so all these soldiers are carrying the br- branch of a tree and when these soldiers who are thousands they are coming out of the wood of bernam it looks like Got it? समझ में आ गया जितने सिपाही हैं ऑल द सोल्जर्स अपने क्या किया एक एक पेड़ की डाली सर पे रख ली अब हजारों सोल्जर्स ने पेड़ की डाली सर पे रखी है तो वो चल रहे हैं तो ऐसा लग रहा है जंगल चल रहा है दूर से देख रहे हैं सो इफ यू सी दैट सीन वेयर द सोल्जर्स आर कवरिंग दमसेल्फ विद ब्रांच ऑफ ट्री एंड यू सीन दैट सीन फ्रॉम अ डिस्टेंस हाइट्स इट लुक्स लाइक द वर्ल्ड इज वॉकिंग सो वन प्रोफेसी फुलफिल्ड now the soldiers enter in the castle the fight starts soldiers are fighting killing each other after some time macbeth and macduff they come to face each other they are in front of each other macbeth tells macduff first he says see i am sorry for your kids and uh, wife that was not my target but when the fight Macbeth tells Macduff you cannot kill me no mortal can kill me with an ordinary birth no mortal can kill me with an ordinary birth Macduff says wait 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 i am not an ordinary birth i am cesarean <laughs> i am born through the operation <laughs> so that's not a natural birth ordinary birth and macbeth is like <laughs> what उसको कहावत क्या दी कि जिसका साधारण जन्म हुआ है वो तुम्हें नहीं मार सकता नो मैन कैन किल यू विद ऑर्डिनरी बर्थ वो कहता है मेरा साधारण जन्म नहीं हुआ मैं तो ऑपरेशन से पैदा हूं ऑपरेशन बर्थ सो आई एम दस्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी बर्थ आई एम दन इज गोइंग टू केल यू एंड हेयर मेक विद गेट्स फ्रस्ट्रेटेड ही रियलाइज दैट हिज एंड हैज कम देर इज अ फेमस लाइन राइट ऑन दैट थिंग लाइफ इज अ टेल टोल्ड बाय एन इडियट शेक्सपियर की फिलोसफी है Life is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury. Signifying nothing. 
Life is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. This scene, this line comes in Act Five, Act uh, Scene Five. This is a repeated question of exam. Please remember this thing. Act Five, Scene Five. A repeated question. Thus, se bara bara ho gayi. This is uh, almost repeatedly asked question, ten to twelve times. Do not forget this. Act Five, Scene Five. Life is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Macbeth, yeah, Macbeth says these lines. Another question that has been asked from this particular line: sound and fury. Yes, sound and fury is the name of the book written by William Faulkner. Title taken from Macbeth. Sound and fury written by William Faulkner. Approx 1926 का publication है. William Faulkner, Caddy, Benji, Compson family, they are the characters. Clear? So th this line is actually very important. The lines are like this, tomorrow, 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 life is nothing but a walking shadow that poor struts. Uske ending ki lines hai. Life is a tale, means the message is that life is just a drama. There is no meaning. The witches knew everything, but the witches didn't tell me that I will become the king. Then the wood of Birnam will walk, and finally I will die. So they were playing with me. It is the de uh, it is the destiny that plays with us. So the message is life is a tale. It is a tale, but told by an idiot. So the one who is telling the tale, you cannot rely upon this thing. And this has just sound and fury, the celebrations, the deaths, signifying nothing. Life doesn't have meaning. This is becoming the base of existential literature, existentialism. Existentialism simply believes in this thing that there is no meaning of life. Just live it. Find out your own meanings. All of these meanings are momentary meanings. Life is a tale. Existentialism, astitovad. This line becomes the uh, base of a theory called existentialism. Life doesn't have a proper meaning. Just live it. You have your own meaning. Every individual has his own meaning. There are people like you who are preparing for exams, want to live a civilized life, want to have an organized structure of life. You want to have your future. Then there are hippies. Hippies you must have seen in Rishikesh, Haridwar, Varanasi, Ganga, uh, Goa. Ganga ginare bethe rehte na, sulfur filage. Who are these people? Why they are not having exams? In 60s and 70s of USA, America, there were hippies, beat generation. They were just living the life. For them, every day was like just live the life, seize the day. Carpet time philosophy. This is the last day of your life. Live it like that. There is no meaning of life, and there is actually no meaning of life. It takes a lot of time to understand this. I just understood it like 20 years before. But because of that, the uh, reason is that I read literature. I understand life has no meaning. There are so many people they do. Uh, they will do a lot of drugs. They don't die. Then there are so many people who are health conscious. They die. What's the logic behind that? <laughs> so simply, there is no meaning of life. But when you are living in the social in social structure, we fear living alone. So we feel like we should be in company. We should be the part of society. We should not get uh, rejected or outcast from the society. So we must behave like them. We must reciprocate, and that's why we are the part of society. Rene Descartes would say that I think, therefore I am. I exist. Why Macbeth and Shakespeare? Or Shakespeare has this philosophy. Why Shakespeare says, "Don't take life life seriously. It's just a stage. You're just playing the role. You're no one, nothing. Roles are assigned." In Merchant of Venice. Bassanio talks to Graciano and says, "Why are you sad? Why are you always sad? Do you want to get married? Do you want to become rich?" He said, "No, it is my role. God has given me a role of being sad, so I'm always sad." He said, "This is my role. We are just playing the roles. Literature can uh, change your mind, especially when we'll reach to mo uh, moderns and postmoderns." Now, remember this point. In this book, we have an important scene: Porter scene. Porter scene is a scene where the porters are talking to each other 
द लैंग्वेज इज वर्गर वंस वी आर डन विथ शेक्सपियर आई गिव यू ऑल द कोटेशन एंड ऑल द इंपॉर्टेंट सीन्स डिटेल पॉटर सीन पॉटर सीन इज बिलीव टू बी रिटन बाय थॉमस नैश like the people say that it is not written by shakespeare thomas nash wrote this particular scene on the request of shakespeare thomas nash so porter scene in macbeth is believed to be one of the scene written by thomas nash and this scene is known for its vulgarity they have double meaning conversation in double meaning conversation we call it double entendre a style used in restoration literature a style used in restoration literature double entendre double meaning conversation which is obscene the next one julius caesar khatam ho jayega 15 20 minute mein the next one we have is Julius Caesar Roman play by Shakespeare Here we have to write a point Julius Caesar is a Roman play dealing with Rome Roman kings Yahan pe ek point yaad karna hai Here we have to write a fact There are only three plays written by Shakespeare which are Roman. Coriolanus, Julius Caesar, Antony and Cleopatra. This is also one of the amazing stories. Antony and Cleopatra. Is cannot wither her not custom stale. Cleopatra one of the finest female creation by Shakespeare These three plays are the Roman plays so please remember three plays only three plays are Roman plays Now these three plays when he wrote it is said that Shakespeare took inspiration from Plutarch's lives Plutarch wrote a famous biography collection of Roman kings called Lives Plutarch was a Roman writer Plutarch wrote the biography collection of the author uh, sorry kings under the collection lives plutarch was a roman author he wrote the biography of the kings under the title lives so this is called plutarch's lives a source for shakespeare shakespeare took references from here to write these three roman plays this is a question of exam and the question was not direct that roman plays are taken from the question was which book is based on plutarch's lives four options one option was coriolanus clear now if they make the question tough plutarch's lives is translated in english by thomas north thomas north translated plutarch's lives in english So if we have to go for the English version of Plutarch's Lives we will call it Norse Plutarch's Lives This one is in Roman not translated in English so we call it Norse Plutarch's Lives in English English version Tell me kahan se confusion hua bolo I'll repeat Tell me if you got stuck somewhere I'll repeat come on For all the Roman works, for all the Roman works, and there are three Roman works, three plays, three Roman works. They can also ask you a question. Pick the odd one out. These three name, one extra name. So pick the odd one out. Three plays, Roman plays. Sources taken from inspiration taken from Plutarch's Lives. Thomas North translated Plutarch's Lives in English. Right now, the remaining plays, the British plays, all the other plays, the British plays, just like Romans. these are questions now the british plays are based on 
जस्ट लाइक रोमन प्लेज हॉल इन शेड्स हॉल इन शेड्स क्रॉनिकल्स द नेम ऑफ द कलेक्शन ऑफ द बायोग्राफीज ऑफ इंग्लिश किंग हॉल इन शेड्स क्रॉनिकल्स सो इफ दे आस्क अ क्वेश्चन दैट शेक्सपियर ब्रिटिश प्लेज आर बेस्ड ऑन हॉल इन शेड्स क्रॉनिकल्स ये पॉइंटर्स आपको याद रखने यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर दीज पॉइंटर्स दे आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स and there are questions so make sure you remember that fine so uh going for julius caesar once again julius caesar is a roman king he returns from a victory everybody is happy in the rome they are enjoying julius caesar is known for a famous line vini vidi vici this is a famous line from julius caesar vini vidi vici i came i saw i conquered i came i saw i conquered this will be discussed in post colonials i came i saw i conquered so they came the outsiders they saw they liked it so they conquered us this is a line from julius caesar so julius caesar is a good man right he has won the war rome is enjoying everybody is happy is a roman king but the problem is even if you do good there are people who are jealous so there are people who don't like it there are people who are jealous and just like that there are some people like senna some other ministers they are jealous of him they want to kill him julius caesar has a best friend brutus a famous army commander a brave man a loyal man so they want to kill julius caesar it is not easy so these ministers sinna and others they make a plan that let's take brutus in our side brutus is a best friend of julius caesar and a devoted roman he is a good roman person a patriot they go to brutus and say that see julius caesar is going to unnecessary wars he is involving our soldiers he is getting them killed for his name and fame we romans are already safe we don't need to fight these roman people who are enjoying they don't know what they have uh, done as uh, what they have paid as a cost julius caesar is threat to rome brutus doesn't listen he said no caesar is a good man he is fighting for our nation he is protecting our nation and uh, we should adore him they say no try to understand this is wrong caesar is a threat to rome and then these ministers arrange some forged letters fake letters written by written by this citizens of the room fake letters and these fake letters are dropped at the gate of brutus it looks like that the citizens are writing which is actually written by the ministers he reads the letters what is written in the letters that please help us we don't want to go for war julius caesar is threatening us julius caesar is a bad man please this this and that finally brutus is convinced that yes julius caesar is threat to rome i am loyal to my kingdom to save my country we must eliminate the target julius caesar now see julius they make a plan now brutus has already joined them brutus was a good man but just got confused and convinced because of those tricks he had joined them caesar has to go to attend a meeting his wife calphurnia caesar's wife calphurnia comes and says that please do not go to the meeting today do not go to the assembly today i have seen ill omens i have seen bad dreams i have seen owls i have seen jackals crying maine kile pe ullu ko dekha hai owls ko dekha hai i have seen the jackals cr ko dekha hai maine all these things along with my bad dreams please do not go to the assembly today caesar doesn't listen caesar says cowards die many a time before their death jo darpok hota hai wo bar bar barta hai cowards die many time before their death sky mounts the death of the uh, monarch the death of the beggar goes unnoticed comets are seen when kings die he gives amazing speech that i am not scared i am a brave man so 
जब राजा मरता है तो बहुत बड़ी चीज होती है कॉमेट्स आर सीन वेन किंग्स डाई सो वेन ही इज गोइंग फॉर असेंबली असूत से कम्स एंड ट्राइज टू से समथिंग एंड ही टेल्स हिम बिवेयर ऑफ द आइड्स ऑफ मार्च बिवेयर ऑफ द आइड्स ऑफ मार्च उसको बोलता है बच के रहना जो मार्च कर रहे होंगे प्रोटेस्ट कर रहे होंगे अब सूद शेयर अनआइडेंटिफाइड सूद शेयर ही ट्राइज टू से समथिंग बट सीजर डजेंट फोकस सीजर डजेंट लेसन सो द लाइन ही सेज बिवेयर ऑफ द आइड्स ऑफ मार्च बच के रहना जो तुम्हारे आगे मार्चिंग वगैरह होंगी एक मिस्टीरियस फिगर हु इज बिलीव टू बी द सूद शेयर द प्रोफेसी वाला द गाइड द गाय हुई वॉन्ट टू टेल हिम टू बी सेफ मैन हु न्यू दिस थिंग Prophecy, prophecy uh, trailers, people making prophecies, soothsayers, ides, ides. It's not idols, ides of march, marchings, march procession. He says that they are calling you and the assembly to celebrate your victory. So they will have uh, kind of marchings in front of you, just like the twenty sixth January parade, fifteen August parade. So he says, beware of those marches. Caesar doesn't listen. Caesar, kisi ko nahi sunta. He doesn't listen to anyone. Now what happens? They goes to the court, and uh, the moment this Ide of March passes in front of him, all of a sudden, all these ministers stab him. All these ministers, they stab him. But we have Katappa. Who is Katappa? he stabs him from behind the most trusted one stabs him from behind caesar turns looks at him at to brutus this is the last line he says tum bhi brutus you at to brutus brutus you also you too But everybody has cheated me. You too, the trusted one. That's why I call it Kadapa. <laughs> so Brutus को देखते हैं. He says these are the last words. At to Brutus. This is also the name of the book by a postmodern author. At to Brutus. Now see this. Caesar dies. Caesar was actually a hero. People were in love with him. A civil war starts. now the civil war has started public has protested another hero another character mark antony now he becomes prominent he comes in front of everyone delivers a speech let me correct brutus delivers the speech first to pacify the civil war brutus tells everyone that no 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 we had to kill julius caesar he was a bad man and this this and that then after speech of brutus mark antony comes he delivers another speech and in his speech he tells the secret that do you even know what was the last wish of julius caesar the death wish he said donate my property to my citizens every citizen should get something from my money from my property now in knowing this thing the citizens get mad a civil war starts brutus realizes his mistake that i have not only killed a good man but a friend also all these ministers they are getting killed by the crowd some commit suicide fearing the crowd because the crowd will kill in a very cruel way some commit suicide brutus orders his assistant that i want to die like a warrior kill me stab me the assistant was a loyal man he kills himself he said no sir i cannot kill you i prefer killing myself then brutus praises his loyalty that who what kind of man you are then brutus arranges his sword like this in the ground falls on his sword brutus dies this is the story of julius caesar the most debated question that is asked in exam is who is the hero of the story caesar dies in initial chapters 
Who is the hero? Brutus is the hero. Antony is the hero. And that's why people love Shakespeare. The name is Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar gets dead in early chapters. Who is the hero? Real hero of the story. You say Antony. Why? Very good. Yes, there are people those who believe that Anton is the hero, but there are people they go for Brutus also. How Brutus is hero? Brutus is not a villain. What Brutus did was his hamartia, love for nation. Brutus didn't kill Julius Caesar for hatred, rivalry, jealousy. See, hero is not the one who is doing heroic things. Hero is the one, the leading protagonist of the character book, who is leading the book. So Brutus is there. He has hamartia. He is not a bad person. When he realizes his mistake, he punishes himself. Why not? Brutus is a hero. He is the main leading character. Okay. So the answer is the hero is Julius Caesar. You know, it takes a lot of time to read and understand this. Caesar as a protagonist he dies in early chapters but Caesar is in every page of the book it is the value of the character dead or alive so even if Caesar is dead as a person rest of the story Antony Brutus they are dealing with Caesar 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 why we kill Caesar why we shouldn't have killed Caesar Caesar was bad Caesar was good in every page, it is Julius Caesar. So the majority of the critics go for Julius Caesar. But yes, Brutus is not a villain. And Antony becomes hero in the last chapters. Especially the speech. Otherwise, his role was very much dull. So Antony cannot be called a complete hero. So most of the times, they ask the questions. If it is a descriptive pattern, they'll go for this question. So simply remember, and if it is objective, the assertion reason is... Julius Caesar is the hero. He is in every page, every chapter. The story revolves around him. So the leading protagonist is the one who has the story around him. Even in the last chapter, they are talking about Caesar. Antony's speech is all about Caesar. So Caesar is everywhere. And then Shakespeare had a habit of naming the book on the leading character. Macbeth's hero is Macbeth. Othello's hero, Othello. Julius Caesar's hero, Julius Caesar. Got it? So that would be enough for all. We are, we are left with a very important comedy, Tempest. Then Anthony Cleopatra and some minor works. Tempest is very important. We'll study from post school point of view. Last two warm-ups are also pending. So let me just complete Shakespeare so that we can give you proper time for a warm-up. And we'll do a proper warm-up. Tomorrow, I will be taking the whole day class. It will be my class. So maybe 9.50 or 10, I'll start. And then 10 to 2. It will be my class only. Friday we will solve the test papers. Friday we will solve the test papers. Thank you so much.